Oh wait, this this was the opening. Got it. I fell for it again. And it is actually the same. It's her cooking. Maybe in preparation for his birthday. Maybe his birthday is the season's fireworks. 100% gonna make that hardship egg at one point. Next picnic date. Daddy, daddy, do. I want all of you. It's almost doo doo doo. Not since doo 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 have I felt this kind of emotion. I feel like Chica's got a big storm coming, unfortunately. Oh, is that a, a what's his name? The loyal dog. Oh, we're still on this plot. Alright, so maybe it's not the season ender. Perfect time to shop for a gift. Right. Little does Kakuya know. She doesn't give a crap about her brother. <laughs> Poor Chica. Deserves none of this. That's cute. She gets the other sister, <laughs> it's the wrong sister. Uh huh, except when she gets home, then the gloves come off. You're letting a little bit too much out here, Moeha. <laughs> it's borderline obsessive, but there's some sweetness in there somewhere. Yeah, I get that though, that's such a frustrating thing in life. The second you want something that badly, you're all thrown off. You're super charming when there's nothing at stake, but then when you need to be charming, you're the opposite of charming. Whatever that is. A bumbling clown. I had this really awful experience once. When I was working at Wall Street, my boss gave me tickets to a, a Black Eyed Peas concert, I think it was. And he gave me four tickets, but it was last minute. And so I called up a guy friend of mine and we were like, too bad we don't have girlfriends, this would be a great date. But walking to the concert, I happened to see a, a girl that caught my eye. And I'm like, let me just go for it. So I went up and talked to her and it was like, I know this is super weird, but I got these extra tickets to concert. Do you want to go with us? <laughs> and she's like, sure, I'm just going home anyway. So she came with us. And just from the beginning, I was really attracted to her. And I got all tense, everything. I said felt stilted. The event was just full of foot and mouth moments for me. But one of them that I remember is that my friend and I were friends from school. I was finishing up my last couple credits at university. She was an art student and she asked us about our major and we started talking about philosophy. And so me being you know, an idiot. I think the, the play there is to try to impress her with my, my philosophical knowledge. <laughs> and so I start to go down a thought experiment and, you know, go through this whole thing and then realize at the end, I don't remember the whole thought experiment. And so there was this no punchline and she was just feigning politeness awkwardly. And then of course my friend who's totally relaxed cracks a joke about it and she thinks it's like the funniest thing ever. <laughs> they ended up dating, <laughs> true story. But you know, in any other situation, it would have been a great conversation probably, but not what I wanted it to be. They're just all having fun, right? So they're loose and that creates fun for other people. Whereas Kaki is all up in her head, which is not fun for other people. And then you can start to spiral. Just to think about how, how you failed. You might always fail. And then a moment appears in front of you. They did say the girls fall in love with her, right? I'm addressing you by your utility to me. This is going real smooth and great, just like we needed it to. Really? They don't, right? I seem to recall. It's not a thing for them. Right. Money's a little bit tight. Yeah, they mentioned this before. Right, that's... Yeah, that's the thing Kai, Kai doesn't realize. She's not a fan. I mean, they share the same room with a, like a partition, so she has a different perspective. Sounds like a fun household. Aww, that's sweet. Isn't that annoying? The guy who, kinda, who cares for me secretly? What a jerk. We hate Miyuki. Oh, she like superhero that. Another possible reason they don't get along is because they're similar. And Miyuki must be a real golden child in his house. He's got to cast a pretty intimidating figure. So Kei would perhaps feel like she needs to carve out her own identity. That was super sweet though. That's heroic. Very generous. Kei's the younger one, but she looks older, more mature. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drinking black coffee. Is that a foreigner? Yeah, just like him. Saving money. Count those coupons. 
<laughs> oh no. We were warned about this. They're a deadly pair. Uh, what is this dog's name? It's not Balto. Hachiko, right? I think the story is the dog used to pick up its owner after work at the train station and then the owner suffered a heart attack, I think, and passed away. It's a really sad story. The dog waited there every day until his death, the dog's death. So there's a statue for him. Oh, this is right there. Hachi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The loyal dog. Oh, mission accomplished. We made it. Oh? This is so dark. <laughs> I know it's a joke, but she was just being loving. She's like a you know a puppy you punish for licking your hand. There's a big injustice to it. Something from the heart probably would be best. Something that signifies a relationship, maybe? Something that shows she cares about him. <laughs> I mean it's ridiculous, but legit he would love it. Oh, I think I didn't take that as far as Hayasaka was taking it. He might be a little overwhelmed by this. At least we won't be fighting over slices. It's a lot. It's extravagant. I feel like from the, the frame of mind Miyuki thinks from, this kind of huge gesture might create a kind of debt or perception of debt. What would I get Miyuki? Food actually is a great one, especially for high school, I think, because he's not expecting money, but it's from the heart. It shows care you imagine the person like taking time to make it for you and also it's an activity to do together but this cake isn't it it's too too big and it's made by a professional chef <laughs> kaguya wants to give him a present here we go <laughs> yeah you could feed the whole school with cake and then you could give him the remaining top layer the top slice. True. Doesn't matter. I'm with Angel Kaguya. Let's give him the cake. This is my mind in a nutshell. It's a lot of blah blah back and forth. I like this side of Kaguya. I like Angel Kaguya. And there's no way he doesn't appreciate it on some big level. Even if it's not perfect. But it's also like, this is this is not a big deal for her. Like, there's no sacrifice for her making this giant cake. She just asked her, you know, her chef to make it. This Kaguya is great! Listen to Botai Kaguya. This doesn't feel like good and bad Kaguya or like Angel Devil. This feels like genuine Kaguya, like, you know, young girl open heart Kaguya versus sort of expectations Kaguya. This feels more like what we know about her family. What was the thing that they had on the wall? Use everyone. Barf flowers all over her. <laughs> I think I was saying at the end of season one about how Miyuki represents something that Kaguya needs for herself. There's like a, a freedom that he can unlock, or that he represents, or that she can unlock, but he's the, the star, the North Star. You gotta reconcile the elements, Kaguya. And then it got terrifying. I hope she sings. She better sing. That'd be the ultimate humbling move. That's a fake out. That's a fake out. Don't even... Well, after that, Cake's gonna be disappointing. <laughs> I'll just give him one piece. I hope that other cake didn't go to waste. As a food miser myself. A fan. Wasn't expecting that. Sweet. That actually worked out really well. Uh, the cake's in there. 100% I'm opening that, if it's me. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. It's that she thought about him at all. I feel like as much as people pretend their birthdays don't matter, it matters to everyone. Almost everyone. All the Kaguya's win, and Miyuki wins. At least the cake didn't go to waste. That is a huge relief. <laughs> it actually matches the character personally, uh, perfectly. <laughs> Fujiwara Chika wants to make sure of what? What's in the closet behind the paper that says seal? Oh, 
See, aren't you smart? See, they're making progress slowly. Very, very slowly. Big dog. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, more of this, please. More of just good naturedness. This is so refreshing after like a whole season of, of this kind of scheming. It's like just a nice gesture. And he just took it as a nice gesture. And now he gets to do a nice gesture. Funnily enough, Kaguya actually did sort of harmonize those multiple voices in her head. Love Detective Chika. Watch her miss it completely. Big dog. This is what he was saying, but in reverse. It happened to him. Oh no, so much for not plotting. <laughs> one step, or two steps forward, one step backwards, I guess. <laughs> Let's get dark real quick. I was ready to believe for once. Shame on me. Oh, well played. Uno reverse. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder why, Kaguya. Doesn't she, though? I need that fan. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's not over. She also has an Uno reverse. Yeah, she's up two minds right now. Yeah, there we go. We're making progress. Two steps forward, one step backward. And 80s pop. <laughs> I called it Blue Monday, but a friend of mine pointed out to me that it's more like uh, you spin me around. I was thinking about a pen. I was thinking a pen might be good for him, but it seemed a little bit too... I don't know. And Fujiwara gets thrown under the bus. I even know Fujiwara's birthday. It's March 3rd. <laughs> really digging it, huh? This poor guy is just so confused. Is there gonna be a little competition for their... for Kaguya's affection between the siblings? And here's the actual ending. It is very geometric. Oh, it's gonna be one of those sweet ones, isn't it? <laughs> that feeling when you get a message from your crush. The literal sun comes out of the phone. And the, the message floats through the room like Tinkerbell. <laughs> this is very romantic. <laughs> Floating stars. There's a lot of things in that ending. Even on first listen, I like the song. There's something really sweet about it. And I'm getting that vibe from season two already. Giving him a birthday present and then focusing on the fact that he enjoyed her birthday present would have been unthinkable in season one, as far as I can recall. They're both holding out for this confession, but like, if they would stop and look, they've already confessed. As, you know, they're partly aware. And I think that is how it goes. You know, in the moment, there's all this anxiety about whether or not things work out. And if it really means a lot to you, then it's easy to imagine all the ways in which it's not going well, but with a little bit of perspective and faith, in hindsight, sometimes you realize that it started long before you thought it started. Nothing is guaranteed in these situations, and action is really important. But at times it does feel like there's a kind of destiny to it, you know, sort of invisible strings pulling you along, your mind doing work beneath the surface. In general, attraction is kind of hidden, you know, it's just you feel the results of it, but you don't really see the processes of it, which might mean it's connected to something older and deeper than the conscious. The conscious sort of ends up just being on the fire, you know, when you, you articulate things you like about the person, but sometimes you yourself are the last to know, or the last to see the signs at least. At the end of the day, their ridiculous decisions aside, I, I am rooting for them. I think it'll be really satisfying when these confessions do happen, because like I've said before, it will mean more than them getting together, it will also mean them unlocking crucial pieces of themselves that they, they don't know are there yet. This is a self-discovery show as much as it is a romantic show, I think, as is often the case with relationships of romantic nature.